Kapla, Warriors of the Empire, and welcome to another interlude episode of Starfleet Command Orion Pirates Plus Mod. Since we've just recently finished the Klingon campaign, I think it'd be appropriate for us to do one of the Klingon special missions, that being the green and the gold. Imperial Intelligence has discovered that a rogue house is planning to begin a civil war with a raid on the home of a rival house. Your time has come. You have been gaining the confidence of this rival house, and now they trust you as one of their own. Destroy this task force... Destroy this task force of destruction and bring honor to your name. So let's rock. Ooh, we've got a uh, C7. So let's uh, pick up some speed. I'm assuming those are the traitorous forces. So let's get up to power here. You're on ship, Icon. This is Captain Kalrath. We are about to engage the traitors of the Empire. Stand fast and look sharp. With our C7 battlecruiser, what do they got? Uh, we're looking at a standard D7 and a D6. So, not the most impressive uh, firepower we've ever run up against. But, uh, what worthy in its own right, I guess. Let's reinforce the forward shield. Oh, they also got a frigate. It is a traditional F5 type. Okay. Let's see what drones we got. We have one F, so they're fast missiles, but they don't deal a whole lot of damage. Uh, let's get to work on a scatter pack already, because it is going to be three on one. Granted, they are kind of out of date compared to us, uh, but uh, who knows. <clears throat> so we're coming around the asteroid field. Sensors! Captain! Attack squadron entering within our range. They have now detected us. Communications! Open a channel with their lead cruiser. Squadron leader. This is Captain Komar of the IKV Relentless. Ah, Captain Kelroth. Good to see you. We are about to share our displeasure with the House of ba Baslar. Join us for in the glory of the kill. Let's see here. <laughs> it does have special options. Hail them. Captain Komar, I am afraid I cannot allow this illegal operation to continue. What do you intend to do, Kalroth? Let me show you. Kill channel. I hear a high energy turn going off. Let's uh, pick up some speed here. Make it so they can't get away. And they are starting to open fire on us. Let's precede it with an opening barrage. They're moving at speed of 20, so our missiles are moving at 32. So they're actually closing at 12, so this will take eh, two-thirds of a turn, three-quarters of a turn to make it. Our forward shield reinforcement seems to be taking it. Scatter pack is ready to rock. That's excellent. We are slowly gaining on them. And the reason why we're slowly gaining on them is because I want to be able to sort of munch them up one at a time. He's slowed down to a speed of 18. We've got hits through. All weapons fire! And he's slowed down to a speed of 16. Wonderful. Uh, we'll drop down to a speed of about here. This is good for us. Another spurt of missiles here. He has launched his missiles and they have gone right through. Probably should have done something about that. I did not. But he's losing tractor beams. Let's see if we can't get our uh, side firing phasers to shoot. There they go. We're going to come around to port. We're going to pick on this guy just a little bit. We're going to put shields at 360 degree coverage. And we'll drop another point of speed just so we have more uh, defensive abilities. There we go. Really kind of gutted him. Uh, I'm thinking we might leave him for dead. I mean, he's not dead yet, but I mean, look at all the systems he's lacking. So we might be able to safely ignore him for a little while. And there we go with that. So let's focus on this guy. He is, after all, our primary target. Uh, what was the name of the ship again? Uh, do, do, do. I can actually scroll through the entire comp log, but it's a little glitchy. Ah, uh, it doesn't matter. So we're going to close on him, move up full speed, drop a mine here, and now, let's see what this does. You are an honorless dog of the House of Martok, and I shall ensure you die like one. Slave of humans, I shall rip out your throat with my bare teeth. He doesn't appear to be coming back at me, though. So, this will take a turn and a half to get there, ish. Uh, forward shield reinforcement, please. And we are taking fire from the rear, so we will also reinforce the rear. That way we can kind of catch up to this guy, deal some damage. Now, he is a standard D7, which means that super thin rear glass shield is something that we can take advantage of. We're making a speed of higher than 10 uh, above what he's doing, so or about 10 of what he's doing. 
9.99. Okay, let's let's be pedantic. Star Trek fans being pedantic? Who would have thought that? Closing into range, we're going to prepare a full disruptor volley. And blast into him. Now we're going to cut some speed. And what happened to missiles? I don't know. Uh, he has dumped a mine. I think we'll get through all right, though. I am going to pull off a bit. Oh, we've taken out our front shields. Still getting hits through. Okay, so we didn't turn enough to bring the uh, the port and starboard uh, the side to the rear phaser. Okay, so it looks like he's carrying small missiles as well. Uh, wonderful, as far as I'm concerned. Although that also means we have 70 reloads. We're not going to run out of ammo anytime soon. So we're going to get another, just after we clear this just a bit, another spread of the missiles. Get them in there. Fire through. This guy is, of course, the primary target. And I want more damage on him. Go Marines. I'm thinking it would be the greatest honor to steal this guy. Well, capture him. You know, after all, he's a traitor to the Empire. We've got to... We've got to make an example of him. We should be keeping on top of repairs. We are still in a 3v1 situation, which is not good. I mean, that is really dangerous. Because we've seen what happens just in 2v1s. Uh, I will not select the missiles. Because I'm a little concerned what they'll do. Ah, oh, crap. Well, I guess we're not taking him alive. Uh, we've got the F5 heading our way, and the uh, the D6 not doing so well. Still at a speed of 6.5, so he's really hurting. Let's send four missiles this guy's way. See what he does with them. He's got one, two, three, four, five phasers to deal with that, but he only has phasers to deal with that. So you know what that means. He's got a back dumped. Uh, hopefully I can do something about his shuttle bay. No? Not happening? Ooh, perfectly timed. That was beautiful. Come on, admit it. That was pretty good. So we will now focus on the final traitor. The final enemy of our house and traitor to the Empire. How dare they think that they could gain personal glory by attacking a house without the consent of... Chancellor. That's it. <laughs> was it Emperor? No, it's not Emperor. Ch Klingons don't have an Emperor. They've got a Chancellor. Supreme Chancellor. Gauron, Martok, offered to Worf at one point in an episode of DS9, but he ended up giving it to Martok, because he didn't think he was the right one to command. Worf's a good guy. He's like the stereotypical Klingon, more Klingon than Klingon Klingon. Although I suppose that kind of makes sense, because he wasn't raised as a Klingon, so he was raised on the ideals of a Klingon, which is pretty cool. Just the way that whole thing works in-universe. How are we doing on repairs? Eh, we've got a little bit of damage to phaser one. Let's patch that up. It is going to reduce our firepower just a little bit, but the fact that he's doing 6.5, lagging so far behind the fight, I'm not sure he's got enough power to do anything to us. I mean, he did fire a disruptor at maximum range, but he's got no shuttle bay, so that means we don't have to worry about any kind of any kind of incoming wild weasels or scatter packs of our own. Oh, not good, sir. Pound through everything that they've got. And side phasers, that's it. The green and the gold. So let's see how we did. We're actually going to look at the uh, the end menu stats. This is an interlude episode, so it is going to be shorter than most. Uh, well, we're still setting up the ISC campaign and all that. So, astounding victory. You have done very well today by defeating the enemies of the Empire. You both, you both honor your house and the Navy. You may go. Battle report for John Doe. That's the default name that it gives you. Uh, total damage scored on the player fleet. They only did 180 damage to us. Wow, that's that's pretty good. With a 94% shield efficiency. Also pretty nice. It means we took 94% of the damage on the shields. Uh, internal damage scored on us was 10, so... 170 armor is what this C7 has, I think. I think that's how that works. Uh, total damage scored on enemy units was 633. Uh, internal damage caused on enemy units was 473. I'm sure we could work that math out and figure out sort of like the average armor between all three ships. Although that wouldn't be quite correct. One was a T6, one was a D7, and one was an F5. Enemy fleet losses were 318. Player fleet losses, absolutely nothing. We did very well. I'm very proud of us. So that was the green and the gold. Uh, there may be another interlude episode in there. Uh, the Federation Expeditionary Force, after all, did manage to humiliate our squadron just towards the end of things. So 
Uh, in order to survive, however, they have to recross the entire empire. Actually, we can take a look at that just in a moment. Uh, yeah, so the Federation Expeditionary Force is somewhere around here, where they were last seen, and they've got to get through all of this to get to here. I think there's a pretty significant chance that uh, they may be intercepted by some sort of Klingon squadron. Now, whether it's Admiral Terak and his little group here, or some other force, not really sure, but uh, yeah, stay tuned. We may end up seeing what the fate of the Expeditionary Force ends up being. Until that happens, though, and until next episode, I've been Tirak. If you like what you've been seeing, hit that like button and subscribe, and I will see you all in the next season.